What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking in. In this video, we're going to go over SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, and we're also going to go over some stocks that we're watching for the week ahead. These stocks include names like NVIDIA, Apple, AMD, Tesla, and Microsoft. We're going to give you all the resistance and support points that you need for these stocks that way you know exactly where to enter, where to take profits, and where to cut losses if you have to. So let's go ahead and get started by first talking about SPY and we're going to do so on the daily candles. Remember we always like to start with the daily time frame because it gives us an idea of what the overall market is doing. So although the market pulled back on Thursday and Friday, you can see that on the daily time frame we are still very much holding a very strong uptrend. So when we zoom into the shorter term time frame, we do see that there was a strong pullback last week and we're going to talk about the reasons of that pullback in just a little bit. But on the daily time frame, the last time we saw a two-day pullback or a two back-to-back -back red days, we came down all the way to the 20-day moving average, so many traders are wondering if that's going to be the case this time around. This week, we have a ton of events to look forward to, and we're going to talk about how those events influence the market. But before we jump into that, let's talk about some events that happened last week. Last week, we saw Netflix and Tesla both report earnings. Tesla beat on both revenue and earnings per share. However, Netflix missed on revenue but beat tremendously on earnings per share. Now, of course, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty details of these earnings, but we do want to talk about the outcome of what happened after those earnings. So you can see that the tech index last week, which is Triple Q, pulled back along with most tech stocks from their highs or their 52 week highs. And that's all thanks to Netflix's and Tesla's earnings. Now, although both these companies pretty much beat earnings, both of them fell and traders were quick to take profits from the highs. So many people are wondering the reason behind that. The reason behind this is because you got to remember what happened throughout this entire year. This entire year, the markets have been rallying and they have been leading these stocks to outrageous valuations once again. So instead of just beating earnings and they just kind of hit their numbers, traders wanted to see a very strong earnings beat and they wanted to see strong projections into the next quarter. Now, Elon Musk did warn that the next quarter is actually going to be lighter because they do expect that they may need to cut prices even further going into the next quarter, which is going to hurt Tesla's profitability even more. So although they beat on revenue, they still missed on their profitability targets, which is what markets and everybody is looking at as the bottom line. So when you see things like this, it will drive fear across the market. So the fact that Netflix and Tesla, some of the largest companies on the market, and they were the first to report earnings, they reacted so poorly to earnings, that drove the rest of the market down. So now this week, the focus is going to shift to other parts of the market and other earnings, but especially the FOMC. So the Federal Reserve is expected to have their two-day meeting this week, and they'll give us an update on their monetary policy along with interest rates. The Federal Reserve did not change rates last meetings because inflation numbers have cooled down and although they have cooled down further, most sources are reporting that there's a 90% chance of another rate hike going into this week. Now apart from the FOMC which is happening on Tuesday and Wednesday, so markets are going to be very volatile around those days so just be careful, we also have earnings from Meta, Google, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Boeing, McDonald's and many more companies. So we're going into what's known to be one of the busiest weeks of the quarter because we have so many things going on. So the market is going to be very unsettled this week. Now, if all that wasn't enough for you, we also have second quarter GDP ex estimates along with the PCE report, which is the Price Consumption Expenditures Index. This is another inflation report and actually the Fed rely on this report more than the CPI report to measure inflation. So, so much is happening this week. We have a lot to look forward to. Now let's talk about some levels and stocks that we're watching. First, let's go over SPY's levels. Here we have SPY getting rejected at 456.43 last week. That's the highest point we've reached all year, in fact, and that's the highest point we got rejected from. So that's going to be our main resistance in focus. Above that point, we have a bullish breakout and we can move to our next price target of 458. And above 458, we have a bit more of aggressive price target at 462.50. If you are bearish on the market, it is not time to call this a bearish reversal just yet, but you can play puts if it breaks below 4490 and you can take it down to 436.50 to 437. Now, if we do break below 4490, it is going to take a long time for us to get back above that point, so buyers really do not want us to see move below 448.25 this week. 
The next talk on our watches is going to be NVIDIA, where you can see that NVIDIA, like the rest of the tech sector, pulled back last week and closed right around its 10 and 20 day moving averages. So if you're looking at the daily candles, you want to use the 10 and 20 day moving averages as your support or resistance points. Remember, if a stock is trading above those levels, it's using those as a support point. If it's trading below them, then those will act as a resistance point. Here's an example of where the 20 day moving average acted as a support point and buyers came in at that level and you can see that they pushed the stock higher into all time highs. So if you're looking at Nvidia on a shorter term time frame and you're looking for bullish breakout levels, first of all, anywhere above 440, the stock is still very much considered bullish and it should not be looking looked at as a threat. If it falls below 440 and it moves below 432, then it's possible to play a short or a put position and your downside price target would be anywhere between 413 and 415. If it moves below 413, then the next downside price target would be 400 to 405. But just keep in mind that the market is still very much in a strong uptrend. So a small pullback should not be held too long, especially if you're playing the downside. If you are bullish on Nvidia, you need a move back above 460 for the stock to move towards its all-time highs. Remember there was a double top rejection, so two times buyers said that they are not willing to pay above 481 for the stock. So the stock will need a very strong breakout above that level for it to continue to our next price target of around 495 to 500. We do not expect the stock to break out of this level this week, but anything can happen. So just keep that in mind and keep these levels active on your chart. The next stock on our watches is going to be Apple. Apple, like the rest of the tech sector, also pulled back, but notice the stock managed to close above its 10 and 20 day moving averages last week. If you're looking at Apple's shorter term time frame here in case the hourly candles, you can see that Apple is holding a strong, healthy, bullish range and it needs to move back above 195 for it to move towards its price target of 196. If it moves above that point, the next price target would be 198.23 and this would be the ultimate breakout point. Apple's all-time high is 198.23, so above that level, the stock can continue rallying on and on. And once it breaks above 200, we do not expect the stock to move back below 200 anytime soon. Now to the downside, if the stock moves below 191.20, which was the lowest point that it saw on Friday, then it can fall to the next downside price target of around 189.60 to 190, and below that level, it can fall to 188.45. The next stock on our watch is going to be AMD. If you're looking at AMD's daily candles, the stock is one of the only stocks that's trading below the 10, 20, and 50-day moving averages. So this is not a good sign if you are a buyer of AMD. You want the stock to recover back above that 50 day moving average as soon as possible or else buyers are going to lose faith. And if the market pulls back even further, AMD will be one of the first and one of the strongest to go down. So just keep that in mind if you are an AMD trader. Let's talk about some levels to watch on AMD. If you are bullish on the stock, obviously we just talked about the 50 day moving average. So that's the first point you needed to move above. However, ultimately you need the stock to move above the 122.12 resistance, which was its rejection here at this point, for it to continue its rally towards 126. And above this point, the stock will likely continue going towards its 2023 highs. But while at its this lows, you have to pay attention to the support at 108.70. If the stock moves below that level, then it can fall towards 107 and below 187, it's likely going to continue falling. And we're gonna talk about that level and that's going to be the 100 day moving average here. So below 108.70 and 107, the stock is going to retest that 100 day moving average. The next stock on our watch is going to be Tesla. Tesla suffered a very strong downside move last week and we have some levels for you here. Let's talk about some short term levels for Tesla. Here Tesla needs to stay above the 253.60 support in order to avoid falling further towards 240 to 245. Obviously, that would be a very sharp downside move and it would take it near its 50 day moving average. So if you are bullish on the stock and you're watching the daily candles, you need it to move back above the 10 and 20 day moving averages as soon as possible. If it stays down here too long, buyers may lose confidence and it may come down to that 50 day moving average. On a shorter term time frame, you need the stock to move back above 285 for it to move back into favorable bullish territory. Above 285, the stock can move back towards a $295 to $300 price target. 
The last and final stock on our watches is going to be Microsoft, which are reporting earnings this week. So keep that in mind if you are trading the stock. This stock is still trading above its 10 and 20 day moving averages. And you can see that last week, the stock actually broke out into new highs, but the stock was not able to maintain the breakout over the next few days. And this is why we always want to tell you that anytime you see a stock make a sudden and sharp move, it does not mean it will continue. So don't be quick to jump into calls or long the position if a stock has not proved itself at these highs for multiple days. Now, if Microsoft broke out and over the next two to three days, it maintained a level near that 365 level, that means all these buyers were still holding and they were getting ready to push the stock higher. But the fact that the stock pulled back the very next day already told us that these buyers are now letting go of their positions and everybody that jumped into this position a little too prematurely ended up giving up and lost a lot of money. So just keep that in mind when you are trading, you don't wanna have any knee jerk reactions. Sudden moves are great to day trade, but you don't want to swing trade them unless they have proven themselves from multiple days. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for checking in. Don't forget to subscribe and like.